Every single year, millions of Americans make New Year's resolutions. Now, one of the co most common areas that people make resolutions evolves around their money. Talking about getting out of debt, talking about paying off credit cards, talking about increasing your credit score, saving more money, investing for retirement, all these different things. Now, if that's you, if you are one of more than 60% of people that make resolutions evolving around your money, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. One of the big things that I'm a huge proponent of is teaching people how to start thinking about reaching financial freedom. I think retirement is an outdated mindset. I think we need to be thinking about money a little bit differently. But if you are somebody who says, hey, I don't wanna wait the next 30 years. I want to set myself on a path to reach my financial goals quicker this video is gonna show you how you can make 2023 your best year ever when it comes to your money if you just do the five things that I'm gonna show you. So make sure you watch all the way to the end and subscribe and hit the bell, that way you're notified every time I launch a new video. Make sure 2023 is the year that you get better with your money and regain control of your financial life. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180 and in this video we are talking New Year's resolutions. Happy New Year to everybody. If you're watching this live on the premiere, it is New Year's Day and I just want to wish you a happy New Year and uh, you know, really encourage you that this could be your best year ever when it comes to your money. As we enter 2023, there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the economy. There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the political world. There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the real estate market, the stock markets, uh, the crypto market with the FTX thing right now. It's all kind of a, just a mess, right? And so the question is, what can you do to kind of avoid all the noise, avoid all the chaos, and just kind of focus on what you need to focus on and have control of the results in your own financial life? As I said before in the intro here, we're, we're talking about you reaching your financial goals. And so in this video, we got five things, but ultimately six steps that I'm going to cover that are going to help you reach your financial goals faster. And you can see here, I want to get on this on my board here. So number one here is having clarity of your financial goals. The big thing here is I know that if you don't have clarity about what you are looking to accomplish, you're never going to be successful. Uh, you know, it's, if you don't know where you want to go, any road will get you there, right? And so it's, you just kind of, you have no guidance, you have no GPS. When, when, when you think about clarity, I think about just taking the most efficient route to get to where I want to go. If I wanted to drive from New York City to Los Angeles, I could just wing it and I could probably make it. I'm probably going to make some wrong turns. It's probably going to take me longer to get to where I want to go. Uh, than, than it would otherwise, if I either had a map like the old days or if I were to pull out my phone, right, and pop in the address where I wanted to go and ultimately let the GPS tell me route by route by route, road by road, turn by turn, where I wanted to go, how I wanted to get there. And that's gonna be the most efficient way to do it. Now, it's no different with your money. If you don't know the end destination, if you don't know what you're, you want your life to look like, if you don't know what you want the end result to be, then you're not gonna be able to be as efficient in getting there as you would be otherwise. If you understand what that end destination looks like, and I'm gonna hammer this for a second, when you understand that, it impacts every other decision that you make. You understand, you know, uh, sometimes why you have to make certain sacrifices. It makes it easier to make those sacrifices to get to where you wanna go. So ultimately, my encouragement to you today is to really take a second and really sit in this and think about clarity. Where do you wanna go? What do you want your life to look like? Are you married? Do you have kids? Are you thinking about retirement? Do you wanna reach financial freedom faster? What does your life look like? If you reach financial freedom, when you hit retirement, how's your life gonna look different? Like, what's it gonna be like? You gotta start with the end in mind and reverse engineer a process to get there. And so before you get into any of the other technicals, and I'm gonna get into all the stuff about debt and saving money and all that stuff here as we go, but before we get into any of that, I really want you to like write down and think about this. What do you want your life to look like? And what are the goals? What are the needs? What are the desires? And when you come from that perspective, it makes every other element, the, other, the next five things that you're gonna need to do to get there, it makes it easier because now you're tapped into why you need to do it in the first place. And when you emotionally buy into why you need to do it, it makes the what and the how 
that much easier. So I hope that helps. That's number one. Number two is increasing financial efficiency. So when we go here, increasing financial efficiency, you can see is uh, a lot of people think of financial efficiency uh, simply as paying off debt, right? So one of the things we talk about is paying off toxic debt. Now, this one alone, I think this paying off debt, we'll, we'll just label toxic debt as credit card debt, as stuff of that nature. This one alone is a resolution for a lot of people, but I'm gonna tell you, I don't think that's enough for you. I think 2023 is the year that you can make your year bigger and better. This paying off debt has to be part of a bigger plan because if you just, the goal is to pay off the debt and you don't understand why you need to pay off the debt and what you're gonna do after it and, and what the plan is above and beyond that, what's gonna happen is, and I see this all the time, you're gonna pay it off and then before you know it, you're gonna wind up in toxic debt again in a couple of years and uh, you see this a lot of times people refinance their houses they do a cash out refi they pay off all their debt before you know it they feel good but then a couple of years later their credit card debt their toxic debt is is back out of control again and then they they got to repeat that process now the reason i call number two increasing financial efficiency is because paying off your toxic debt is part of it once again that is a new year's resolution in and of itself for most people or for a lot of people Increasing financial efficiency, that's the, the paying off debt as part of it. Leveraging credit cards, this is where I kind of confuse people a little bit. I always say, pay off your credit cards. But then the next step is learn how to use your credit cards properly. Because if you learn how to utilize your credit cards properly, there are all sorts of bonuses and points that go with this from that perspective, from a financial efficiency perspective. You're talking about being able to get more points, get more cash back, get free flights, get free vacations. If you take every dollar that you know you're gonna to need to spend, think about your mortgage, think about your, um, your, your grocery bills, think about any payment that you make, your utility payments, that you, anything you're gonna make, let's say you have $5,000 a month in expenses that you know you have to pay that are your fixed costs, your gas for your cars, uh, any, anything you're doing for your kids as far as, uh, far as sports and stuff of that nature that you're going to do anyway that you bake into your cash flow plan, then we're talking about you know, putting those on a credit card, making sure you pay that card off every month. You gotta grow, you gotta make sure that you manage it properly. That's where some people struggle, but I'm talking about not utilizing credit cards for consumer type behavior, not utilizing them to buy things like vacations or uh, meals out or anything of that nature, Christmas presents, stuff of that nature, uh, things that they shouldn't be financing, things that they can't typically afford. I'm talking about things that you're doing in life anyway, leveraging credit cards, that can get you an extra couple hundred bucks a month back just because of the way that you're funding everything and, and paying for everything in your life. Now, leveraging credit cards is a big thing. So we got paying off your toxic debt, which is probably those credit cards in a lot of situations, but then not just cutting them up, not just discarding them, but learning how to utilize them properly. Then the other thing is getting your money to work for you in, in multiple different ways. When you do this, remember we have, everybody has a finite amount of resources. Every dollar that flows through our life, we wanna make sure that dollar is operating and, and, and performing multiple functions for us. If we can have that dollar doing more duties for us than otherwise, i.e. get that dollar to become a savings account, get that dollar to provide other benefits for us, and there are different places that we can save our money, and I'm gonna talk about that more as we go, but that's a big deal. When we do all this the right way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase our credit score. That's gonna increase our financial efficiency because it's gonna take all the cost of borrowing and it's gonna drop it, right? So it, it's, it's gonna, drop the cost of borrowing, it's gonna increase our cash flow, it's gonna make our dollars be more powerful for us, right? Which is a big deal in today's economy with this inflationary environment that we're dealing with. Number three, let's get into this. We need to build an emergency fund. This is where what I'm talking about, getting your money work for you and, and performing multiple functions. What do we need to do? Number three and four, this is the biggest deal. You need to build an emergency fund. You need to build an opportunity fund. Now, I'm gonna be fully transparent. I don't know where you are. I don't know how much toxic debt you have. Remember, I'm giving you the five, six steps right here to be able to get to where you wanna go uh, in 2023. This is the New Year's resolution plan that I think you need to follow. And I think, honestly, if you're thinking about this, I would really just ask if you're finding value in this that you share this video out with people um, give it a like, give it a comment. Please let me know that you're finding value in this and get this out there to people because I think 
I'm really excited, as I said, about 2023 because there's a lot of uncertainty in the world and I think there's gonna be a lot of challenges, but if you do what I'm talking about here, you're gonna find that you open yourself up to much more opportunity. Now, because I don't know where you are, I don't know if you're gonna be able to get through and, and actually build your full emergency fund uh, or build your full opportunity fund in 2023, right? So, you know, 2023, I'll write a question mark. I don't know if you could do that, but the bottom line is, the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The next best time is right now. If you haven't planted it right now, if you haven't done what you need to do, then the best time to do it is right now. Not doing it right now just because you can't get it completely accomplished this year doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. I'm a big believer people way overestimate what they can accomplish in a year and they underestimate what they can accomplish in a decade. And if we could just make these small incremental improvements on a day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out basis, you're gonna get to where you wanna go. It's about having a plan and that's what I'm trying to give you in 2023 here. Your New Year's resolution, I encourage you not to think about just, hey, how do I pay off debt? Hey, how do I save more money? Hey, how do I do these things? The question really becomes not how do I do this one thing after another, is how do I build a plan, start executing to get to where I wanna go? That is the resolution that you need to be as a whole. Now, the only way you're gonna do that is by investing for cash flow. The old buy and hold assets, investing for retirement, retire at 65, save, work, save in your 401k, qualified accounts, stuff of that nature uh, for 45 years or 35 years is not gonna get you where you wanna go. 95% of the people in this world are not able to maintain their standard of living when they hit retirement right now. That is, that is an atrocious number. And the most prosperous, the most prosperous country in the history of this world only five out of 100 people are able to maintain their standard of living when they retire right now. That is an abysmal, abysmal statistic. It's an atrocity in my opinion. And so the only way to do this is by investing for cash flow. Now, I've got a lot of other videos on this. If this is your first time here, I wrote a book called Cash Flow Hacking. I've got the uh, version 2.0 coming out for my book coming out in January at the end of this month. It's gonna be really, really exciting. So I encourage you to check that out. I encourage you uh, to go and, um, you know, just get the download of that book when you get a chance. Um, but really think about investing for cash flow, what that looks like in your life, and go check out my other content, my other videos that will guide you through on what you need to do for that. And so then the next thing is you need to create a monthly P&L. Now, what do I mean by a monthly P&L? So what I mean by a monthly P&L is basically uh, it's a budget. Now, I don't know about you, um, but for me, I hate the word budget. Budget has a, a, a component of scarcity in it, restrictiveness. I don't wanna have to, sh I'm never gonna shrink my way to wealth, but I like the PL statement because it's really about managing cash flow. And that's, if you wanna be successful in life, you better learn how to manage your cash flow. Manage your cash flow this year from a, from like, think about it, like I call it a P&L because every business has a P&L statement. A P&L statement simply measures what are your outflows, what's your overhead, what are your expenses, what's your revenue, how do you manage all this? And then of course, the goal of any business is to grow, right? And so that should be the same way you run it in your personal life, right? You should be thinking about how do I grow my life? How do I grow my expectations? And, and how do I measure my inflows, my revenue, and then my, my expenses, my outflows, right? And, and if you can manage that cash flow, then you're gonna be much more efficient. Now, take that to the next step. For retirement, it only makes sense that we should be thinking about cash flow from a retirement perspective. And unfortunately, most people don't think about that. They just think about how do I get to some big number? How do I save a million dollars? How do I save as much of a, of a pile of money into an account without even understanding why they need it? what it's gonna do for them. And so those are the things that you need to think about. You need to go through, you need to have clarity. You need to have clarity about your, your, what your financial goals are. You need to increase your financial efficiency. And then you need to start once your financial efficiency is all set up. Now two, three, and four, that may all happen, overlap a little bit with each other. And that's, that's fine. It may not all happen in 2023, but the one, the, the thing that you should be doing is when it is time to buy your first cash flow asset. And by the way, it doesn't need to be a huge asset. It doesn't need to be real estate. It doesn't need to be all these things. It might be just getting a Turo car, go get a $20,000 car, invest, get a 20 to 30% annualized rate of return. That could be a really, really powerful thing. Uh, but ultimately create your budget and make this happen. If you create your budget and you, you go create a P and L, 
and you get better at managing your cash flow, it's gonna make everything else you do easier. And if you think it's really hard to do this, my, my encouragement to everybody is really think about number two, increasing your financial efficiency. Once you have clarity, this is the hardest part. Increasing your efficiency is the hardest part because there's so many emotional barriers to doing it. So my encouragement to you is that you do it, you execute, and you, if, if you do everything you have to do to wrap your head around why it's that important. So if you have any questions, go ahead and comment in the comment section below. If you haven't already, like this video, share it out, subscribe, hit the bell, that way you're notified every time I launch a new video. And until next time, have a blessed, inspirational year. Reach out if you need anything. And if you have any questions about this at any point in time, make sure, come back, watch these videos in every video. I have a link in the description below that you can go to and you can set up a call with one of the coaches on my team that can help you execute all this in your life. Here's to 2023 being your best year. I know it's gonna be ours. Happy New Year.